Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host. Welcome everyone to our YouTube channel, the best show in the world, The Planning Show. Here we celebrate the planners who have contributed to shape our society, and today we have two extraordinary guests here with us. His book is completing 30 years in 2023, one of the most famous works, The Next American Metropolis, Ecology, Community, and The American Dream. Yes, I'm talking about Peter Calthorpe. Peter is a San Francisco-based architect and urban planner and is an alumni of Yale School of Architecture. He won numerous awards. Calthorpe founded an urban planning software called Urban Footprint, and he coined the term Transit-Oriented Development, TOD. With him, we have Shelley Poticha, who is currently the director of Urban Solution and helped Peter write his book and with her input. Unfortunately, she can't join us in the studio today. Please warmly welcome Peter Calthorpe and Shelley Potichega. Welcome Peter and Shelley. Welcome to Calgary. How are you enjoying it so far? It's going great. I'm new to Calgary and this is my first snow. Thank you, Yasmin. Hi, Peter. It's such an honor to share this platform with two great personalities. So thank you for inviting me. So Peter, your book is going to complete 30 years of excellence. The book is divided into four parts, the introduction, the causes, the guidelines, and the projects. Tell us more about your work. The book is about the American metropolis, by which I mean the sum of the city, its suburbs, and their natural environment. The book is about the ecology of communities. Not the ecology of natural system, but about how the ecological principles of diversity, interdependence, and scale can play a role in our concept of suburbs, cities, and the regions. These principles stand in stark contrast to a world dominated by specialization, segregation, and lack of scale. Finally, the book is about who we actually are how our patterns of settlement affect our economy and environment, and most importantly, how things can actually change. The perspective and knowledge in this book is largely gathered from professional practice, which combines architecture, urban design, and land use planning. This book is part theory, part tool, part proof by assertion, part manifesto, but mostly, I hope, common sense. This book gives us the first introduction to what theory means, and what theory actually is. It was really insightful to listen from the creators themselves. This makes me more curious, what inspired you to write this book? If I must explain it in one word, it was the American dream. If you sneak into the history of planning, the growth model has always changed due to transportation methods. Automobile industry changed the growth pattern after World War II. Highway became the main street and the ring roads were constructed to travel vast areas. During 1970s, these patterns of growth have become more and more dysfunctional. Suburban sprawl became the worst enemy for our cities. It causes air pollution, fossil fuel dependence, social exclusion, neighborhood disruption, and mountain congestions. At the turn of the century and during the Great Depression, Howard's Garden City movement defined small towns around railway station with more emphasis on civic buildings and village scale communities. In the same period, Tony Garner developed the first modernist approach, which was further supported by Lee Corbusier and Flackroyd Wright with principles like segregation of industry, isolation of uses, love for the auto, and dominance of private spaces over the public in their design of contemporary city and broad care city. As a result, the street, which was once used as community common ground, got completely disintegrated. In my opinion, we could learn lessons from these failures. The sprawl has caused a great economical shift. The growth of the service industry has led to new traffic patterns and suburban gridlock. Look at the example of Bay Area San Francisco. Over 40% of all the commute trips were from suburb to suburb. By looking at the map, we can see the sprawl has quite evident as compared to 1964 to 1986. The lower density development was prominent to such an extent that the vehicle miles traveled, which is VMT, were growing three times faster than our population growth for the
for the last four decades during their time. Between 1969 and 1990, the national population grew by 21%, while the total vehicle miles traveled by car increased 82%. This can be seen if you look at the mode split in North America. The US average mode split was 86% auto, 8% walking, 3% bike, and 3% by transit. Canada has a similar walk versus bike mode split, but a much higher transit utilization of 15% of all trips. This clearly indicated that there is a need for growth patterns to change. Moreover, we were not respecting our ecology and community. Lack of affordable housing was one of the major causes as well. During those times, the average American household's 20% of the total budget was spent on transportation. A study by Rutgers University comparing compact development to the suburbs and sprawls found that $1.8 billion could be saved in roads infrastructure in New Jersey alone. Imagine this money going into affordable housing. All these factors directly effort poverty. We had forgotten about the finely integrated, walkable and compact traditional American communities, which had a strong local identity and some great public spaces. the term transit-oriented development. What is TOD and how did you come up with this concept? Take us through that entire journey. The concept was gradually developed. In 1986, I co-authored a book called The Sustainable Communities. While we did not introduce transit then, but we talked about short automobile trips and thus reducing the traffic congestion on the roads. I then developed a concept based on new urbanism called the pedestrian pocket. I worked with other professors on this book and the results were published in a book called Pedestrian Pocket Book. This book talked about a simple cluster of housing, retails and offices within a quarter mile walking radius of a transit system. It encouraged a mix of uses in that area. It was received by national media then and the New York Times actually published it stating as a transit oriented development. After this article, I actually began to refer to pedestrian pockets as transit-oriented development. TOD became a fixture of modern planning when I published the next American Metropolis in 1993. And as they say, the rest is history. A transit-oriented development, which is TOD, is a mixed-use community within an average 2,000-foot walking distance of a transit stop and core commercial area. TOD is mixed residential, retail, offices, open spaces, and public uses in a walkable environment, making it convenient for residents and employees to travel by transit, by bike, foot, or by car. By looking at the map, we can see how the residential, commercial, and the secondary areas are connected to one transit spine. So let's understand what are the three building blocks of transit-oriented development. This is mainly categorized under urban TOD, neighborhood TOD, and secondary areas. Urban TODs are located directly on the main rail line network and are developed with high commercial intensity. Neighborhood TODs are located on a local or feeder bus line within 10 minutes of travel time. They should have 
moderate density. Each theory may have a secondary area adjacent to it. Secondary areas may have lower density single family housing, public schools and large community parks and should be within walkable distance to the urban TOD stations. To know more about the transit-oriented development and its guiding principle, let's join Peter outside in the real world. Right now, Peter is standing at the 8th Street station in downtown Calgary. We are not saying that this is the best example of transit-oriented development. We are here to talk about some of the guiding principles of TOD which can be seen around this precedent area. Let's understand the structure of guideline principle of TOD. Ecology and habitat teaches us to be environmentally sensitive. Commercial, residential, secondary area with public uses and civic uses become the four elements of TOD. Finally, we will talk about the street circulation and pedestrian circulation. Now, let's talk about the primary elements of TOD near the 8th Street station. This is the core commercial area near the TOD. As you can see, they are connected via the street and it has an emphasis on the needs of the pedestrian and the transit users. The commercial buildings have no setbacks and have an active frontage. Talking about the residential area now, the key to the housing program for the transit-oriented development is diversity and flexibility. The main entry to the residential buildings should be oriented towards the streets. The third one is the secondary area. You can see how this place is used for low intensity use and it is still connected to the main commercial core near the transit station through street design, pedestrian design and trees aligned along with the pathway. The parks and plazas are the public focus of a neighborhood. They are used for public gathering and interactions and should be designed for active and passive uses. They are a fundamental feature of a livable and high density TUD neighborhood. Civic buildings should be placed in a central location as visible focal points. Let us talk about circulation systems now. Streets are a very important part of TODs. The travel lanes should be minimized. Sidewalks are required along all the streets with shaded trees adjacent to it. On-street parking is encouraged on the streets except the arterial roads. TODs and secondary areas should be connected by connector streets without compromising pedestrian movement. Pedestrian routes should be provided along all the streets. Crosswalks should be present near arterial junctions and a coordinated system of bikeways should be provided in conjunction with the TODs. The area for transit-oriented development must be defined by the transit lines. It drives the density location and quality of growth. Transit stops 
should be located near to the core commercial area and they should be directly visible from the transit line. Park and ride lots should be avoided, but if we are providing them, they should not disconnect the stations from the pedestrians. Parking near urban TODs should be reduced and standard parking can be planned near neighborhood TODs or secondary areas. We can also propose joint parking which can be used by the commercial during the daytime and by the residents during nights. The last principle of TOD is to encourage infill and redevelopment projects along the transit corridors in existing neighborhoods. We can convert empty parking lots into public spaces which can then generate activity. This one is special. One of the planners, Beverly Sendelag of Calgary, is actually leading an infill project on this side with the University of Calgary planning students, which will actually have a great impact on our built environment when this space gets converted into a public space. Thank you Peter and Shelley for the whole tour about TOD. You talked about downtown Calgary and pointed out many TOD principles that can be observed there. What do you think the reason for the empty downtown is? The one factor I think which is missing from downtown Calgary is population density. When we talk about density, it is the density of both the built environment and the population. Affordable housing is also missing from downtown Calgary. The place is not activated enough and infill projects, which are a very important part of a great neighborhood, are actually needed there. Are these guidelines only theoretical or have you evaluated this in a real project? We have worked on different projects at different scales, which are also explained in the book. TOD guidelines were mainly applied at four different scales. Regional plans, station area plans, new neighborhoods, and towns and new towns. Regional plans are basically a combination of many towns and upcoming new towns. Towns have neighborhoods and neighborhoods have these station areas. There have been lots of reviews about your book. Some say that it's the best guide to start learning about urban planning and some say that there is nothing new in your book as per fundamentals. What do you think about that? I never said um, that, that the fundamentals are new. I have mentioned Jane Jacobs in the book as well from where I got the inspiration for these fundamentals. But I say that I have organized all the good urban planning and design principles and tried to put them together in a form of what I call TOD. I'm just curious, what are the impacts of your book has produced over the years in the field of urban design? I think the book has been immensely impactful. You see these new concepts of 15 minute city and the super block, the fundamental principles align with the principles of TOD, which we have mentioned in our book 30 years ago. Their focus of development is also nodal, which is similar to TOD. We see a lot of new projects near transit stations that are now being converted into TODs. One such project in the making is near Inglewood Station Area Development in Calgary. I'm so glad that this book has been a guiding path for many. It has been a lovely day with both of you, Peter and Shelley. Before we wrap up, any last takeaway messages from the audience? The stage is all to you guys. We just want you guys, the upcoming planners, architects, landscape designers, to design for the future. 
The cars are still growing and human scale is diminishing. Design walkable, pedestrian friendly mixed use spaces for the community and design for the future generations sustainably. I just want to end with a question for you guys watching. How can TOD be implemented in some parts of Calgary and how can the transit be improved? Is TOD the answer or do you have something better? I hope you got all the answers right. Thank you. Have a good day. to shape our society and oh, Jesus. <laughs> and today we have two extraordinary guests here with us. His American Oh my god. Okay, so one, two, three, stop. How are you enjoying it so far? Oh, it's been great. I'm new to Calgary and this is my first snow. environment. This book is about the ecology of communities. <laughs> First, no. So Peter, your book is going to complete 30 years of excellence. Oof. What the I have been talking to a window for the last five hours. Does that make me a good actor? Do you have any take home message for everyone? Yeah. So basically Luke says, eat, sleep, and just look pretty. Mr. Director, I'm not doing this again. It's so cold out here. Shooting for urban design theory. Signing off, Peter Kalthog.